Hey guys, before we get into this week's uh, episode of the podcast, I'm super excited. Uh, the second editions of the Accountant's Guides are out, the Guide to IRS Collection and the Guide to Resolving Tax Debts. As you've heard from listening to the podcast, there's been no better time to launch your representation practice or take your existing practice to the next level. The books will, in a very economic way, help you do that. It, they literally walk you every step of the way, start to finish. They are designed to be very readable. There are case studies, exhibits, letters, everything that you would want right there at your fingertips, okay? And there's a special, when you go to get the books, when you purchase the hard copy books, you get the eBooks for free. So the moment you buy, you'll instantaneously have the eBook. All right, so you can get started right away. Go check, you know, click on the link, check that out, all right? So everyone, listen, um, I've gotten a lot of questions about tax rep, right? What is tax rep network? Is it worth joining? What tax rep network is, is an online community of those of us who really are working at building our practices, right? This is how Jeff and I basically built a $4 million practice in five years, all right? And we are helping the other members do just that. We've had the $100,000 challenge when we got more than 70% of our members over that. We're now helping them go to 250, 500, even a million, all right? There are three different levels of membership. Silver, if you're just interested in doing some of the training, all right, you can certainly get in on the silver membership. When you're ready to start taking cases and you wanna start consulting with us, that's where your gold membership is. Gold membership, you basically get everything. You get the books, you get the conferences, you get all the training materials, and you get access to the forum, to the other members, the monthly marketing calls, the monthly Q&A calls, the case study of the month, and also, again, you can consult with us. Then there's the platinum membership, and the platinum membership really is designed for members that, that whose have elevated their practice to the point where they just need more access to us. And that really is all it is. The platinum membership are for those folks that want to be able to get on a weekly call, want to come in here once or twice a year, meaning Integreen and Sklar's, to actually do hands-on training with us, all right? So platinum is really designed for members that have already crossed those, those, those thresholds that they have set and are now trying to take their practice to the next level. So whether you're silver, gold, or platinum, there's been no better time to do this. So go check out Tax Rep LLC. There'll be a link in the description to the podcast, and we hope to see you inside. Bye-bye. All right, guys, listen. I want to remind you, um, May 15th of this year is the full day criminal tax program, all right, at Quinnipiac Law School, whether you want to come in person or join us on the web, all right, it is eight hours, we bring in some of the top speakers from all over the country, friends of ours, people from the government, and uh, we are going to be walking you through what you need to know about criminal tax. So whether you're an attorney who wants to start doing this work, you're a CPA or EA who wants to get in in being involved in criminal cases because they're very lucrative, uh, or if you're unenrolled and this is simply an area that interests you, so when you do get your EA, you can start working toward that and adding this um, to part of your practice, like being a Covell accountant. Um, go check out that. The link is in the description. It's eight hours. There's the early bird special now is going on. So grab your seat while you can. The room sells out every year. I'm sure it will again this year. All right. And hopefully we'll see you on May 15th. Hey, everybody. It's Eric Green. Thank you for joining me on uh, this episode of Tax Rep Network's podcast. What I wanted to talk about today is something we, we get a lot of, a lot of our members ask about that, uh, about this. And, and what it is, is, you know, what do you do when the phone rings? What do you do when you get that new client call? All right. Uh, what does Eric Green do? What does Jeff Spars and, you know, Geiger, what, what do we do in our office? Well, all right. And so uh, this will be a, probably a fairly short episode, but what I do want to talk about is simply there's sort of a, a checklist that you're going to go through, right? Because here's what's going to happen. So the phone rings and it's going to be, hi, Mr. Green, I have a tax problem. I, I need to talk, talk to you. Now, first of all, they don't tend to get to me. 
I have people in between for the very reason that what I found is I will be sucked into 15, 20 minute phone conversations for a case that we are not going to take. Right? A lot of times they'll call, you know, I, I, Mr. Green, I, and, and for those of you who have the books, you've heard some of these stories that are in the books, uh, the, the accountant's guides to, you know, collection and, and resolving tax debts. But you get the call saying, you know, I, I got to come see you right away. I've got an emergency. And then finally, okay, what is it? I owe $3,000. Well, we're not taking that, right? I mean, we have a $5,000 minimum retainer. So we're certainly not taking that. So I have my people right, who will call them back and say, okay, we got the message. How much do you owe? What years? What type of tax? Is it just the IRS or is it New York? Is it California? Is Connecticut involved? You know, who, who are we dealing with and how much money is at issue? Once we have those facts, that's when Eric Green will go to work or Noel or Jeff or Lisa, whoever in our office, right? So then it, become, it becomes, sure, come on in, bring everything with you and bring, it, bring the check. Because as I've told you on many podcast episodes, we charge, all right, for consultations. What, I'm, what I would urge you to do is the same, and here's why. If you don't charge for consultations, do you know what you're going to end up doing? Once your reputation gets out there in this area, do you know what you're going to spend most of your day doing? Free consultations for people that have no interest in hiring you or means to do so. So there's a lot of money to be made here, but there are certain rules. One is we charge for consultation. Now, is that in every single case? Do I truly do that in every case? Well, you, you know better than that. Of course not. I have some very good referral sources. And if they are, tell their clients to call me, I will, in, I will at least give them a 10-minute phone call because of the relationship with the referral, right? But folks that find me on the internet or read my blog and want to come in, no, no, no. We charge $500 for that consult, right? And that will weed out a bunch of people. But for the most part, I find that they'll come in and pay it because they like the idea of coming in, sitting with me, looking at me, breathing our air, drinking our coffee, whatever, all right? So first thing, they're gonna show up. Now, I just wanna talk about payroll tax cases, all right? Because that is a massive amount of what we do, right? Most businesses get into trouble because of payroll tax and sales tax. So let's talk about the payroll tax cases. So, they come in and they're going to tell you, I've got a very good business, right? We fell a little behind, a little behind. How much do you owe? 125000 But, you know, we fell a little bit behind. The first thing you need to deal with with a payroll tax case, and this is why I'm doing payroll cases first versus income tax cases, because there's a, a, a issue with the payroll tax case because it's a business. First and foremost, is this business even worth saving? Okay, and I'm gonna give you an example. That company I just mentioned to you, this was a case we had this week, which is what prompted me to do this podcast. I've got a really good business. It's netting about you know, $85,000 a year. My dad started it, it's been in the family, blah, 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 right? Every, all, for some reason, entrepreneurs have this weird attraction relationship with these unfeeling entity things that they've created that they, they, they become attracted you know stuck with it right a business i'm just going to tell you as a global a business is no different than any other asset someone owns a stock a bond bank account you name it all right it's a business it's an entity it's a thing if it's good then you keep it if it's bad get rid of it especially with a payroll tax issue, because now not only is this business going to destroy itself, but the liability for the trust funds will destroy everything else the taxpayer has, right? This is the one asset that might just destroy all your other assets, all right? So first of all, is this worth saving? So again, the client, right? It's about 138000 with penalties and interest. They owe about 90000 for tax, and that is from just the four quarters of nineteen. So I said to them, I said, all right, so it's netting 85,000. I'm looking at the p &L, which is cash basis. And of course they didn't deduct the payroll taxes. They didn't pay them. I said, so let's just assume for the moment you actually paid the payroll taxes. 
taxes on schedule, which was like 94,000 something. So this business lost $8,000 last year. And he looks at me like I'm crazy. And the accountant who's with him is very quietly nodding his head up and down. Clearly the accountant has tried explaining this to the client, the client doesn't get it. So I said, well, look, and I walked him through it. I said, so this thing's losing money. And not just like in a depreciation kind of a way, real cash dollars. So I, so I said, so I'm gonna repeat the question. Is this worth saving? Because I can tell you right now, it's gonna cost you probably about 10 to 15,000 in legal fees. You're gonna to have to probably get into a payment plan. We may be able to make the uncollectible, but they're not gonna let you keep not paying the tax, All right? Oh, and by the way, do we owe sales tax? And he said, well, not, yeah, but not very much. Well, not, what's not very much? Another 17,000. That means they pocketed 17,000 of sales tax that they didn't pay over to the state. So this business is actually losing like 25 grand a year, right? So first and foremost, with a payroll case, you've got to sort that out. But the next thing we're going to have to deal with is compliance, right? Whether you're going to do an offer, installment agreement, uncollectible, doesn't matter. We need to get into compliance. What is compliance? We're making all of our current tax payments. So right now we're in, I'm recording this in February of 2020. If it's a company payroll, they should have made all their deposits for January and February, right? If they're self-employed, they got to make their first quarter payment on April 15th, right? And if they're an employee, they're having sufficient tax withheld from their paycheck, so they will not owe money at the end of the year. So first and foremost, we got to get them into compliance. And I will tell you, that to me is the most difficult part. It's not doing an offer in compromise, right? But my tax rep members, they will, they will attest to this. If you want to do, okay, if you want to learn to do an offer, you give me two to four hours, you'll be an offer expert, right? You get into tax rep, you can do an offer. If you buy the books, you can do an offer. It's not that complicated. You have to understand the rules. And you got to understand, you know, the way the allowable expenses work. There's always quirky, weird things that come up. But by and large, it's a formula, right? So it's not, it's not, it's not the analysis, and it's not the process. The collection process is not that difficult. The exam process is not that difficult. It's actually, frankly, quite simple. It's dealing with the client themselves, right? Who probably are good at whatever it is they, they do, but just can't get their financial shit together, okay? So first thing you're gonna next, it would be, so payroll issue aside, right? The global thing with payroll is, are we even, is this even worth the fight, right? Is it worth saving this business, all right? Once you get past that, whether it's business or personal, you're gonna deal with compliance. Once, we're, once we get the compliance thing nailed down, or while we're doing that, what's the collection alternative? No, I'm assuming they're in our office because they can't just stroke a check and pay this. Fine. Are we doing an installment agreement? Can we do an offer and compromise? Can we make them uncollectible? Now you got to get into the analysis of the RCP. What is RCP? Reasonable collection potential. Right? One, can they do an offer? And two, if they can, what does that look like? Now, I did an offer a couple of years ago and where I wiped out $27 million for about 500,000, right? Great deal, huge deal. I don't even know what that is, four cents on the dollar, five cents on the dollar, something like that. What if you don't have 500 grand? What if you can't come up with the equity in the assets? And, and that's, by the way, that's usually where it is, right? You know, to be uncollectible, if you can't have the equity, that's one thing. But for an offer, they're not letting that go. If you want an offer, and, and people in accounts, especially, well, how, if we can't tap it, they can't include it. Yes, they can. Here's the way to think of an offer. An offer is if, to the IRS. If you want us to write off a debt, a debt that we all agree your client legitimately owes, right? if they don't really owe it, go do a Dallas for liability offer, go do audit reconsideration, whatever. But we're at the point now where we're assuming you're conceding that they owe this money. If you want a deal, here's the number we want, and it includes the equity and the assets. If 
You can't tap the assets. That's your problem, right? There's no God-given right to an offer, right? Right. 7122 says the secretary may accept an offer. It doesn't say it doesn't say they have. To. Now, if you meet the standards, they're supposed to, right? They 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 can. Now they do have a few outs, which we're not going to get into now. But for the most part, they will. But you got you got to, that equity is going to be included. So first of all, what is an offer? If you have to evaluate the RCP, if they're going to do an offer, what does that look like? If it's an installment agreement. What does that look like? And, and again, if you've got the books that you're a tax rep member, you know there's a lot of strategy, right? We can do some planning here, legitimate, right? I, I want to warn everyone, by the way, listen to this. Collection cases do go criminal, right? They will refer these collection cases for criminal. This is not a time to get aggressive and help your client hide stuff. We do not hide stuff. We do not commit fraud, right? Listen. I know my client has a problem. Maybe I like them, maybe I don't. But I got my own problems. I, I, I see no need, if they're on a sinking ship, I see no reason to jump on and go down with them. All right? If they end up going to jail, all right, instead of, I don't know what I have now, I looked the other day, 187 open cases, I'll have 187 open cases, or 186 open cases, or whatever. If I lose my license, trust me when I tell you, I have no other meaningful skills. Okay, so we got to evaluate the RCP. What is the game plan here? And are there some moves that we can help the client make to set them up for an offer, right? Uh, if, you've got, if, you, if you went through the books, you know the analysis you have to go through. So we've gone through that analysis. Now, can we implement a bunch of those strategies and line them up to maybe get them into being an offer candidate to reduce or eliminate the amount they have to pay for an offer? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right? Because the big, the next thing is, what can, what is it going to look like, and can they afford it? You know, as I mentioned, five hundred thousand to get rid of twenty-seven million is a good deal if you can come up with five hundred thousand. Now, in that that case, the client had family that effectively they effectively signed and refinanced stuff for him. But not not a lot of my clients can do that. So there are people who are going to be quote unquote offer candidates, but where they cannot come up with the money, right? And then finally, are there some other options, right? Is bankruptcy a better option, all right? Older income tax is dischargeable, right? If you meet the three-year rule, two-year rule, 240-day rule, no fraud rule, no substitute for return rule, you know, and again, it's in the books, you can walk through the bankruptcy analysis, but for the most part, there may be an easy way where we don't have to fight about the RCP. We don't have to really worry about current compliance so much. In chapter seven, if they qualify, it's a hell of a lot easier. File and you're done. Bang, federal and state, the state income tax can be wiped out. Now, the bankruptcy analysis is more involved. You really need to have a bankruptcy attorney that understands these things involved, right? If you're an EA or CPA, you should not be making those evaluations. Get them to a bankruptcy attorney that does this, okay? But there may be other options. If the 10 years is running, maybe we want to make them uncollectible and let the 10 years run on, right? But suffice to say, when the phone rings, if it's a, if it's a payroll or, or in the, in the um, state and local world, if it's a sales tax issue, first and foremost, is this company worth saving? Once you get past that, Paul, the process is the same. The checklist is the same. If you sat in my office with me, as clients came in and out, you would, it would become boring. You'd hear the same thing, the same checklist we go through, all right? Compliance, RCP, alternatives, and is there something easier than, say, an offer? Everyone's in, everyone's in love with the offer, right? They watch those late-night commercials. Ooh, that's what I want to do. I want to be on a golf course with this very attractive wife that I don't have have at the moment, and I want to get rid of a gazillion, bazillion dollars for $3.27. Sounds great, but what is your RCP? So you've got to go through all of this, and are there, and like I said, are there easier options for this, all right? And so a couple things. One, that's the process. Two, make sure you get paid. 
charge for your consult. Again, there are exceptions. I admit we do them too. But I would urge you to not sit and do free consultations. Finally, all right, um, 2020, remember, is going to be the year of enforcement. You know, Commissioner Chuck Reddick, SBSC Commissioner Eric Hilton are going to make sure that we are very busy this year. I would actually tell you to put them on your, your holiday card list, but uh, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the year. If you're not doing representation, this is the year to start doing it. If you are doing it, this is the time to start ratcheting up your marketing, okay, and, and get going on that. Now, um, for those of you who are tax rep members, remember we have our monthly marketing call. If you're not a tax rep member, I don't know what you're waiting for. We do a monthly case study, a monthly marketing call, a monthly Q&A, aside from over about 70 hours of training, the books, the conferences, everything else, and consulting with us. So if you're going to launch your practice, make 2020 the year you do it. Thanks for tuning into this week's podcast, and um, you'll hear from me in another week or two. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, listen, thank you for listening into this week's podcast. We only have sponsors on the program that we ourselves use, all right? Tax Help Software, it is the cornerstone of our practice. It's how we get our transcripts, calculate our CSED dates. It's how I get my updates every day from intelligent ordering, right? We have special offers from Tax Help Software. If you are a listener, go out to www.taxhelpsoftware.com, put in Tax Rep Trial, all capitals, one word. You'll get a free two-week trial to try it for yourself and, and to see how amazing it is. Want to get it? Tax Rep 10 will get you 10% off. Hey, so what do we use in our practice? What do I have my clients using as far as receipts and audit proofing? Receipt Bank, all right? I discovered Receipt Bank when one of my clients had their records destroyed and, been, and were selected for audit. And during the reconstruction, of course, the forensic accountant we were working with said, why aren't you using Receipt Bank? Of course, I'm thinking, why aren't we using Receipt Bank? And given how much traveling I do, whatever it is, uh, the, the Starbucks coffee, the breakfast at the hotel before I go speak, whatever, I take a shot of it. It goes right into QuickBooks. Our controller now has a picture of it. I can keep the receipt, lose it, burn it. Doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if that magnetic stuff fades. We will have that forever. And that's how you audit proof. Go check out Receipt Bank and get your clients using it. Trust me, they're going to appreciate it when the audit letter comes. Finally, how is it that we get through to the government in under three minutes? I've talked about getting through in 30 seconds. Call ENQ, the most amazing service ever. Now, if you get tax help software, it's built in and you can sign up that way. But otherwise, you can just use it and dial in. You will get through to the government, I'm telling you, in under three minutes generally in under 30 seconds, all right? We have a special offer for all of our tax rep listeners. Click on the link in the description, go out, you can get 200 minutes for $20. I'm telling you, it will change the way you interact with the IRS. We calculated at Green and Scars, we think we're gonna cut about 50,000 of billable time off just by using ENQ. All right. And again, we did a podcast episode on this dialing for dollars. Go listen to it if you want more information, but you click on that link, try it. I'm telling you, it will change your practice. So guys, thanks for listening. And again, check out the sponsors. It's what we use. We think they're awesome. Keep building your practices. Bye-bye.